interesting article courtesy of Business Insider, right? Um, called uh, Inside the Rise of Anti-Work, a worker's strike that wants to turn the labor shortage into a new American dream. And this is something that's not just limited to America. I think everywhere in the world, especially parts of Europe, especially in Europe, yeah, especially in Europe where um, you're able to get a lot of money from the state or from the government in order to allow yourself to kind of live and not need to work. There's a lot of benefits out there. <coughs> I look at places like the UK, places like Germany, places even like Spain. And what's essentially happened during the COVID, again, because of COVID, like um, unintended consequences, it seems like this entire time that we've all spent locked in at home, um, locked down, restricted, not able to do the things that we enjoy, we've kind of decided or we've kind of figured out that maybe the work that we were doing prior to COVID, the, you know, 60 hour work weeks, the crazy retail shift, the crazy bar shift that were just giving us just enough to kind of keep up our head water wasn't worth it in the end. And people have now basically um, formed new habits formed new ways of living day to day that doesn't necessarily require them to be busting their ass over a kitchen counter or over a stove you know in a bar somewhere in a shop working an entry-level job in an office it's not worth it for some of those people especially the ones who decided to leave densely populated metropolitan cities for maybe places in the country where they're not paying as much rent they're not maybe as paying as much on their mortgage they maybe don't need to pay so much on their travel which is then allowing them to do other things whether it's kind of you know as Joe Rogan would always say when people start doing podcasts, like, you know, you open your own workshop and you start making custom knives or whatnot, whatever it may be, whatever hobby that they're into, um, they're deciding to pursue that as opposed to pursuing the employment thing because they know, especially in America, when it comes to the American dream, there is no such thing as an American dream tied to an employment working in McDonald's. It just doesn't work. If anything, it's just one way. McDonald's are exploiting you for your labor. And even though nowadays, I think McDonald's are putting up loads of bits of advertising where they're basically saying that they're willing to pay people that want work that up to $20 an hour but for some people that just isn't enough and I think there's a lot of people in that anti-work movement who are trying to push for this kind of um um what do you call it UBI universal basic income or something similar to what we got here in the UK in terms of universal credit where the government can you know cover your rent up to a certain amount cover your living costs up to a certain amount and you just got to make up the difference whatever you need in order to kind of function and whatnot and it works to a certain extent because some people are able to survive and get by with that entirely but in other countries such as America where essentially you are forced into a position to work in order to kind of you know basically pay your way through life and to ensure you have the ability to look after yourself and to pay for stuff like health care and whatnot um it's definitely must be eye-opening but i'm definitely intrigued by the whole premise around it but then on the other side i'm also very aware that work especially for myself i've come i've been, i've come at a weird position because you know i've got entrepreneurial dreams i've got creative dreams i've got really big ideas really big goals delusions of grandeur when it comes to the stuff i want to do in the future and i've always had this i've always been like this since i was you know 10 years old or something and i kind of first saw you know documentaries online about certain artists or certain design studios i always kind of went to kind of go out and do my own thing but through just lack of you know preparation um foresight uh, procrastination fear whatever it may be i just never have taken a step until maybe this last few years where i've obviously started doing nights i started djing i started obviously doing my podcast i started recording i started doing zines that i've kind of self-published and whatnot right i decided to do loads and loads and loads of things oh, it doesn't matter somewhere there there's loads and loads of things only in the last few years and but i've also realized too over the years how important it is to be able to have some sort of employment again from my own from my own um, point of view i found that having a job mostly obviously allows me to have a set a base level of income that's going to sustain me and it also allows me to use that money to fund all my creative projects and the aim has always been for me to use the employment lark as an opportunity to fund a creative project and then if that creative project takes off then you can quit your job but this idea of just kind of not working completely and only focusing on a creative i felt like put too much strain put too much pressure and also wasn't realistic to what actually is required for you to kind of pop because no one knows when you pop no one knows when you're gonna make it no one knows when that next stage is but you just need to be ready for it so the best way to be ready for it would be to have some sort of job that gives you some level of a base and then just supplement it with other things until you kind of get to where you want to get to i know that opinion is kind of different to some people because i've got friends who are a little bit not they're not on that vibe at all they'd much rather work for six months save that money and then use that money to live for another year or eight months and try and make their dreams happen that way and then rinse and repeat but i just don't think that it's a viable way and i think again i get a lot of satisfaction 
as well from having that structure having that you know need to be even if i'm working from home now i need to still be on my laptop at a certain time i leave at a certain time you know i'm cognitive of being a good member of part of the team of providing great service and whatever it may be right I, I, you're really aware of that that and i feel like that goes into informing how i work on my own things outside of that i felt like whenever i didn't have that anchor i always was a bit like too freestyling a little bit too you know wishy-washy and never really got done but i've always found that if i'm working especially at the time when i was djing you know from Thursdays to sundays most weeks before the pandemic i found that working from nine to six really gave me a superpower in terms of getting through music preparing playlists putting stuff on usbs um you know whatever thinking of an outfit whatever it didn't matter but because i had such little time if i finish at six by the time i get home it's 7 p.m and i have to make sure i use the time that i have before i go to bed at 12 or not to get as much as i need to get done before the set on friday whether it's downloading things retagging it putting it onto usbs again thinking of an outfit designing the flyer for the night whatever i had to do it all in those times and i think with that time restriction of having a job that's why i did it i think if i was just able to kind of wake up when i went to wake up i probably wouldn't get around to doing it and i'll be just like one of these other lazy bums or lazy you know creative types that just kind of talk a big game and again at my level you need to have that little bit of a work ethic in that regard but anyway that aside the anti-work movement is here people's eyes have opened again unintended consequences of covid let's go through the article it says the following um larry had a vision after graduating college um he and his then wife were going to be a power couple they were going to actualize their american dream they'd buy in a house in the suburbs and go on vacation every two years that vision of the perfect life eventually shattered his then wife saw through the illusion of work he said and quit to take care of their children and her elderly father it took him a little longer to get there his quote is something that some is something that someone else planted in our minds larry whose last name is known to the side now larry 52 doesn't work by the time the pandemic hit he was ready for a change he left his job as a maintenance technician in south carolina to be with his ex-wife and children in colorado he then got laid off from his seasonal job there he moved back to south carolina to be with his mother he now lives simply in a 20-foot trailer in his in backyard okay they're not selling in this too much in it right this guy lives in a trailer in his mum's garden at 52 years old i'm not too sure if this is a good advertisement for anti-work but let's continue <laughs> he says here i really don't have any expenses i don't need any money i can survive without money he says okay interesting larry's part of something that's growing people who are opting out of working some of them call it anti-work it's a trend bolstered by young workers as gen z's make their mark on labor market in america it looks similar to a similar uh, youth-led movements against the work in other countries especially china where young people are laying flat by this decentering a drive sorry by decentering a drive to constantly be productive and competitive at work and instead find happiness in their own lives and relaxation you know what's funny about this anti-work monarchy it reminds me a lot of um four hour work week by tim ferris which i still think is a hard and bad rep that four hour work week by tim ferris opened my eyes to the idea of living a location independent lifestyle of having a muse a business that basically generated you um passive income as people will say on these fucking self-help videos you see everywhere but that was a game changer back then right the ability to have a little marketing business where you basically free sorry where you basically outsourced all the customer support bits to places like the philippines or india and it basically allowed you the ability to travel in parts of the world and kind of hot desk around in places i remember when i went to nicaragua to travel that time bumping into a guy in a hostel big up bruno he knows who he is um who was very coy and very kind of secretive about what he was doing but essentially that's what he was doing at the time he had a muse he had a little small business that was generating in passive income he was able to do his work um remotely to freelancing whether it was translating whatever he was doing and it allowed him the ability to kind of rent a beach hut on the beaches of nicaragua just chilling you know eating drinking flipping coconut juice and chilling out and smashing tourists and stuff do you know what i mean he, he lived the fucking bad life and i really wanted it at that time people were being secretive they didn't want to tell you what it was about but essentially it's the same thing and people gave you know the four-hour work week a lot of stick because it was a four-hour work week you can't get anything done in four hours but the whole idea the premise about it was effectively not to only work four hours but it was to in decrease the amount of times you're working so that you can actually do the things that you enjoy to do but i think in this modern age or back then especially what you realize is that people don't really have hobbies they don't really have things to do 
which is why they love work so much and i've been in companies like that where people in the company legitimately are good friends they invite each other to weddings and shit they go on holiday together they are the godparents of their flipping kids you know what i mean they legitimately have a connection that's deep because you spend six seven eight nine ten hours with these people every single day five days per week sometimes more you probably see them more than your actual family members so it's no surprise you have a real close connection um but that's what people basically live for day to day they complain about it but they live for it so when someone tells you hey here's a four-hour work week it's going to allow you to have more time to do the things that you actually enjoy doing and not be at work all the time they're going to be like i don't know what else i have to do though because everything i do is in part with work whether it's going to drink it's going for dinner going on holidays going to the theater it's all tied to work because the ideas come from work so that's basically what you basically end up seeing it was more so people's insecurities and oh i think i think yeah the pushback on four-hour work week had more to do with people's insecurities about not having hobbies to do in in their adult age as opposed to the premise of the book being bad or being ill-advised or being um not productive or anything i don't think that's the case anyway continue quote I don't really want to work anymore, Larry said. I don't want to have any meetings, no deadlines, no goals, no quarter, no seminar. I don't want none of that stuff, which I don't blame. You know what I mean? There's nothing worse than a meeting about a meeting working in a company. I think that's one something you only learn once you actually get a first office job. I remember for me when I was working in bars and, you know, clubs and stuff and fucking um, shops, you would always long to be in the office because people, especially working in retail stores or high-end fashion stores, just stores in general, you'd always have people coming in from marketing, um, are people coming in for merchandising and floating around the shop and moving things around and just pissing you off because you know they don't give a shit because they don't work there they're just there to fucking like, change some posters but you always long to be that person that was able to come in with the coffee in hand work in the office and then when you do finally work in the office you realize that the same politics and the same bullshit you experience on the shop floor is the same in the office maybe sometimes worse right there's not a lot of people actually talking there's, there's a lot of people talking behind the back when it comes to offices let me tell you that in that regard you really have to make sure you get in there and make some good allies because it can get really sticky really quickly it continues um a rising disillusion with the state of work has spawned millions into Larry's um, over the last year. People have been quitting their jobs at record rates for six months in a row now, and many aren't going back. That's true, because I think the same thing happened in Berlin when I went. They're really struggling to find staff, you know, be barbacks and all that stuff, and people just working in the round. I think that's why I mentioned it before, one club, I think in Munich, Blitz said that that's the biggest struggle that he's had, not opening up and having people dancing. It's actually finding decent staff, no one wants to work. Um, that's already told you about the adidas so mcdonald's advert that they're putting out now mcdonald's has to have this weird advert really funny where they basically got like a yellow poster and the mcdonald's yellow and they basically printed um one dollar bills to represent every bit basically to represent how much money you're going to get paid per hour and i think it was twenty dollars in there on this thing and people are still don't give a shit you know what i mean mad um so I said that that's because some of some work doesn't seem to be worth it anymore wages have been in a decline for decades uh, while student debt rises the number of pe people with low level wage jobs has grown since the great recession as salary support and middle class life have catered so again caught in a weird place um then came the pandemic billionaires added 2.1 trillion to their collective wealth as millions of americans are unemployed the inequality of the world is mad in it the billionaires get richer and the poorer get poorer um the stories of those in the anti-work movement provide some answers as to why there's an ongoing labor shortage it says the following a million strong and growing the reddit group anti r such anti-work has garnered a million followers it first began in 2013 okay half of those joined just in october 2021 and it means that tens of thousands of people if not more visit the group daily as expressed on subreddit anti-work is about embracing a work-free lifestyle and finding community and pushing back against exploitive working conditions we can get behind that again you see the graph of many subscribers a quote here says a lot of people mistake anti-work for being lazy and like nothing has ever got done one moderator on subreddit who goes by um, whatever he says there um, but the truth of the matter about anti-work and everything surrounding it is that obviously things have to get done but the structure in which uh, things get done and the way the capital flows as they get done is unfair and should be non-existent we should definitely agree but people some someone has to work still that's the problem we all can't be anti-work someone has to get stuff done but it's just a it's just the insistence that if you don't work you die that's the issue right if you don't move you get eaten right you, no, no 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 that can't be how it goes it goes here again k the gen z worker in kansas is one of the people who turned to anti-work and posted after he quit his job as a service worker he had been considering quitting 
fighting for a while but he was pushed over the edge after his boss posted a message telling workers that they couldn't use their phone during shifts and if they were caught on their phones management could confiscate them okay that is a fucking bullshit work job and that's a bullshit boss imagine working in a place like that off the back of a pandemic and your boss is stressing out you working on the phone bro you're lucky we're even in here do you know what I mean relax he continues he says, I never really see anybody not doing work on their phone, Cade said. He added that he didn't think management should have the right to take his personal property. Cade said that he first started seeing posts from anti-work a few months ago that reading people's accounts of quitting and learning from about the ways that they're rethinking work factored into his own decision to quit. He's already had at least one interview for a new job and has a little bit of savings built up to keep him afloat in the meantime. I think it felt like I'd be a lot bigger part of a movement. I didn't want to put up with that stuff. It's also where Caitlin Nickerson, a fellow Gen Z, would post after she quit her job in the first service to pursue woodworking full time. Again, great to see. The table's a bit shit, but you know, it's great to see. Um the group helped see her um the group helped her see that it's not she's not alone and she had four issues about understaffing and long hours were just at her workplace. She quotes, I realise that there's happening everywhere. Companies are saying, Hey, you know, there's a labour shortage but they're not hiring people and they're just overworking their current employees. I think that's not that's I think that's good to know that that you don't have to take that. According to Nicholas Nicholson, sorry, Nicholson he told her boss he couldn't work on a certain day because she needed to bring her uh, car in for the repairs. Her boss said if she didn't show up, she'd be fired. She didn't show up. Yo, who are these bosses that people have, man? Fucking hell. Hell fire. What awful people. Focusing on woodworking has been fulfilling. She said people used to actually build their own stuff and do a lot of stuff at home. I think that stuff isn't really appreciated as much anymore and it should be. Like many aspects of the economy, the rising sentiment against working and conditions create that. Yeah, let's not really waste the whole thing. It's too long. But yeah, you get the point, right? So where do you stand on this anti-working thing? Would you like to be an anti-work person? Do you still think work gives you some level of purpose and direction? Um, are you like me and you like to use work as a kind of leverage or as a kind of bank in order for you to kind of put money into other things that you want to do? Or do you just not care? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts regarding everything on that one.